Morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Doing It 365 with your host, Sir Fluential out of Flags 365. This is the podcast where we highlight the prominent as well as up and coming entities in the Afro Caribbean space, both locally here in the UK and abroad, international, no matter where they are in the diaspora. Now, today's episode is very, very dear to me because it's about a product that I genuinely love. I really appreciate this. It's so integral to our history as a people and to us regionally in the Caribbean. Of course, it's not dancing. It's not jerk chicken. It's something even sweeter than those two things. It's a rum. And today's episode, I'm speaking to a family-owned, Black-owned, father-daughter-run rum business called Cromanti Rum. And I can't wait to find out the, the details about this one and the look and the feel and the taste of what, what they went about doing with it to create it. I saw it on Twitter and I was like, hold on, this young black woman has a run with her dad. I need to, I need to find out more. So introducing today, the Cromanti team, Majel and Kashane. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you both. Hi. 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 Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure. Thank you for giving me your time. I know it's busy. It's International Women's Month, so it's especially busy because Majel is doing lots of things. You're doing lots of things. You're networking and coordinating. And I'm so privileged to have you here because of that reason as well. It's not often you see many women in this industry. It is white male dominated, but I'm so happy to see that the women are coming through and the black families are coming through and Re reclaiming our heritage in a, and pushing it in a positive light because as we know rum, the sugarcane fields, slavery all play a critical part in the story so it's it, 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 it's very 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 special to me and important to me to highlight and dedicate this moment and this episode to really showcasing the beauty and the amazingness of rum and family owned businesses. So talk to us about Cromanti. Why the name Cromanti? What does it mean? Well, Cromanti is a, um, I mean, it, in, in essence, it's a story that, uh, it's a name that represents our story. And the connection from Africa through to the Caribbean is something that's very, very live and real and personal to us. So Cromanti is actually a place in Ghana um, there was a, a fort in Cremante, and it was one of the points that um, some of the enslaved Africans were transported from uh, as part of the transatlantic yeah. slave. And industry. that's where our brand story comes in. So it's based on a person called Cremante Kojo and Julian Fendon. And they were essentially um, slave revolt. So they... Yeah, you can. Yeah, there, there was a there was a slave revolt. So if you yeah. think about that connection between Africa and through to the island that my family are from, which is Karakou, uh, which yes. is part of the yeah. Grenada, Grenada uh, Trial and State, yes, the Trial and State, and um, certainly the the connection you can see very clearly in terms of how we retain some of our knowledge, some of our customs, some of the recipes. Uh, that were used as herbal trans uh, infusions to help people stay well um, has been brought all the way through. So we were looking at um, certainly not just any old story, but a story that was authentic, that was real, and that had lots to say about people who went through tribulations and overcome and still created beautiful things into the world. And it was important for us to not have a brand that was based totally around the the idea of slavery and mm -hmm. wanted to focus on the positives rather than all of the negatives because the history is beautiful but it's not all slavery if that makes sense exactly it's more than that so we felt that was really important beautiful beautiful i i i love that and especially because it 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 um resonates so well with someone that is um that has an african name i have a ghanaian name as well my my uh, middle name is kwesi i've been to ghana before as well i've been to the volta region so pando ho ho hoi and obviously i've been to tema as well so it, it, it i it when i saw the name i was like this this is not this is this is very unique. This is very this this is this is a set of people who have really taken it to the core and 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 show that they are, they appreciate and understand their culture. Have you been to Ghana yourselves? No, no. I want to go there. Uh, 
Definitely. I, I, it's definitely because I, I, I would love to see Cromanti rum being drunk by the Ghanaians in Ghana. And, you know, especially in the, in the December months, because that's when they are in their most celebratory season and time of year. So that'd be great to see you, you know, have your produce produce out there and in heavy rotation. So let's see if, if that can happen for 2021. Let's see if we can get you at the um, Afro Chellas and the Afro Nation Ghanas and, and on the on, on Fuso Ninjas Festival, just to name a few things. So, Kariku, tell me the upbringing and the connection. How does the flavor and the nutmeg spice come into come into the rum from from Kariku? Well, as you as you said, you know that uh, Kariku is, is part of the tri nation state of Grenada. Grenada is known as the Isle of Spice. So. When we were choosing the flavor profile, it was really important that we represented something that was very, very traditional in Grenada. You'll see that the nutmeg, in particular, is on our national flag. So it has a very particular place. Um, nutmeg has uh, lots of uh, healing properties, and one of the things that we wanted to do in modernizing some of the very old traditions, the old people's knowledge, about how they use some of these herbal uh, remedies to maintain themselves, to actually promote well-being, is it, it, we wanted to be able to embed that into not just our product, but also the story. But we were very, very keen on saying, how can we maintain and capture this old knowledge that as the generations mm -hmm. are passing, yeah. is being lost? And that was some of the motivations behind mm -hmm. why we wanted to do this. And a really important part of it was also having that aspect of it being intergenerational. So kind of yes. having these older people being able to pass down their knowledge and their traditions and make sure it gets passed down through generations. Yeah. Beautiful. Majel, I want to speak to you in particular now about the... the um you know, the passing on to the generations, as you're saying, and how you was, I believe you're the social media manager for the yeah. brand. So yeah. how have you, you know, worked your, worked your social media magic and savvy to, you know, push and highlight and let the brand be seen on the, on the different social media platforms? Yeah, so as a social media manager, I create video and photo content. I reach out to people who would be interested in possibly trying a new rum. Um, something that's really helped me is using, well, I use social media daily naturally. So when I did the tweet that you saw, um, I didn't really expect that much traction, but overnight mm. it just got so much attention and it still does till, till now. Um, so that was a really big part. And that whole week was crazy. Like people were, asking so many questions yeah. and um, sales went up quite a bit. But as a young person, I kind of wanted to introduce Cremanti Rum as something, it's not just for the for the old heads, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, it's, it's for everyone and you should always be willing <laughs> to learn about your culture and learn about where you're from and rum's nice. It's not necessarily a young person drink for a mm -hmm. lot of people, but I've definitely yeah. grown to really like rum. And the spiced rum, um, whether it's in a cocktail or, or it's on its own, it is enjoyable because you can taste those flavours. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. I love that. And definitely I remember that tweet because I was sitting back and I was saying, um, there's not enough black-owned rums. And I was a part of a, a um, event series come. Um, for Carnival Concierge, where they, where they were doing the rum tasting, and I believe your rum came up in that as well. And we were we were going through all the black owned rums that we could get to access to easily, and it was amazing to see and hear. And I was like, hold on, are there any more out there? So I started to list them: the Equianos, yeah. the Lasso yeah. Lasses, yeah. the Cromanti, yeah. the Matuga, and yeah. the Live Rum. Yeah. And now we have Flat Cap Rum. So I'm like, hold on, wait, okay. We're, we're, we're building traction and then I said, wait a second, I want to be a part of this too. I want to create my own rum as well. So I was like, all right, what do I do? I need to research. Where's the, this, where's this, how do you do this? How do you do that? And then I come to realize that, hey, it's not as, it's not as straightforward as that, but it's so beautiful to see people are stepping into that space and owning it and bossing it. Talk to us about the flavor you just mentioned, the spices. What, what's the, what makes Cromanti rum so distinct from every other spiced rum? on the shop aisle well firstly 
this this isn't this hasn't only taken a year or two years. My dad has been trying to do this for years and years. Yeah. Um, he's been kind of doing the research and it's been trial and error for the most part. And it's only really in the last couple of years that that's when I came on board and that's when he kind of set his, um, what flavors he wanted to use. And the tamarind was, I think that's a, a really cool choice because personally I've, I've never heard of a tamarind rum. A lot mm -hmm. of people haven't actually tried tamarind before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the, that's like the first part, but you can, and and I think what one of the, one of the reasons one of the things that people ask me is why tamarind, and I remember yes. as a young child, um, my my mum came back from visiting family in Karakou and brought back these little tamarind balls uh, that we know as tamarin, and um, they were great. And she started telling us these stories about how they used to have these little these little um, tamarind balls because they they have a uh, a really unusual, a sour, sweet sort mm. of flavour, but also that they would use that either with the seeds or with the husk to actually boil up in soup to make some tea, particularly when people were feeling unwell. And right. uh, I started to become much more interested in some of those old stories about how yeah. the older heads used to, when they were in places where they didn't have access to, um, some of the um, uh, some of the medical advice that they would have people in their villages or you know the older people would know how to treat these illnesses and that was one of the things that became absolutely fascinating to me and certainly I had these conversations with Nigel when she was studying uh, because she's a social anthropologist so we had this particular interest that we were talking about and developing over the years and it seemed to be a story that actually found us rather than we found. It was the more that we mm -hmm. who we are, where we come from, our family so Just stories. about people in general, like that's what anthropology is, it's a study of people. Um, so learn, personally for me, learning about my culture and these traditions, I wasn't that well versed in them before I started all of this, but it is so interesting and it's so important to keep those stories present and alive. And being able to do that with my dad and with the rum, it's been so much fun. So that that and this is this is for me what it's all about and the beauty of it is how something like I said earlier so integral to our country to our culture and our existence, but like you and also like you said, passed down from generation to generation. You can have family time. You can celebrate. You with it. people use it for mourning ceremonies as well. There's so much you can do with the rum that it's such a it's a staple in the Caribbean region and definitely something to reverence and uphold. And it's so beautiful because I know Karakou and Grenada, they're, they're very, very, very um, prominent now in the UK soca space as well, because we see now the soca artists are coming more here. The, the Grenadians and the, Karak and the kayak people are really representing and showing out every fit you go to, they're representing hard and kayak mass is growing and building as well. So again, it'd be beautiful to not only see Cromanti rum in Ghana, but also see it being enjoyed in kayak mass and spice mass. So is Absolutely. there any plans to, you know, expand? Have you been back, Majel, to, to, to Karakou or Grenada since you've started this or, 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 or any at all in, in, in recent times? The last time I went to Karakou was 2017. Mm. Um, and okay. then it was when I was a baby. So yeah, we don't really get to go as much as we want to. Yeah, but it's it, it, it's something that was was really important um, to 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 you know I I have four children and it's really important that they understand the parts of themselves that aren't always prominent as growing up in the UK mm -hmm. and this was one of the ways that I can do that I can make sure that they have that connection that they can hold on to some of the knowledge that as I said is passing on. And it's really important in terms of a, a sense of people's identity and their mental well-being is that core about understanding who you are, who your people are, and where you have been uh, collectively. And it's okay if you don't know where you're from, but uh -huh. you want to find out at some point, right? <laughs> yeah, De definitely, definitely. So let's get back into more into detail into the rum. How do you best enjoy rum and then how do you best enjoy cromanti rum for those that are watching and listening now and this is their first time hearing about cromanti rum how would they how would you describe it straight 
the palates? How does it affect the different palates? Well, uh, as one of our family members, uh, Martin J said, it is like silk. It was designed to be ideally sipped on its own. Yeah. Um, I, I was the brand ambassador for a grenade and rum brand for a few years uh, in the UK. And one of the things that I kept finding at festivals, at tastings, were people saying, actually, I don't drink rum. It's, mm. it's just really strong and it's hot and it's not really something that I drink. So I made it a mission to educate and inform and introduce people to the different ways that they could write rum you could um, enjoy rum. Yes. So when I had this opportunity to create our own, I wanted to have something that was uh, authentic in terms of it was a natural flavor. And also the, the use of the tamarind brings in a spicy fruitiness to the flavor that actually it can stand on its own. Mm -hmm. So that was quite important to me. But there's a number of ways that we like to enjoy at home. Um, with a, a slice of lime or um, a, a squeeze of lime is, is a great way for it. Um, in a ginger, with, a, with, a, with ginger beer, uh, a bit like a dark, mm. is a great way to enjoy it because you have the, the fullness of the flavor of the spice in there that is accentuated by the ginger. ginger. Um, as a family, we really love doing the tiponge, which is... Um, that's the we, French aspect of it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, we speak Creole in Karaku as well. Cool. Yeah. That has been dying out because of that older generation. So, so the, the, the tip punch is one of our favorites because it's very simple. It's rum, lime, and sugar, and it's a great way to enjoy rum. Traditionally, you would do it with an agricole rum, but you certainly can use it as, uh, with Kromati. Please give us a, a more in-depth explanation of how you create the tea punch because my first experience of it was, I believe, 2019. I went to, um, I had a booking in Paris just for one night and in okay. the club, big up to the French soccer crew, big up to DJ Mac. Um, we were performing and it was like, hold on, they've made a specific cocktail for us and then they also have what the locals drink, which is tea punch. And they did it in a particular way. So I'd love for you to explain to those that are listening and watching for the first time, how do you create tip punch and how do you enjoy it? Well, as, as I said, it's very simple. And traditionally, tip punch was, was traditionally a welcome drink. When you went to, to a house, particularly in the, you know, in Guadeloupe, in Dominica, in uh, St. Lucia, you, you would typically be presented with the ingredients. So you'd have the rum, you'd have the lime, and you would have the sugar and you would make your own drink. And it, and there was a saying that people had, which was everybody drinks their own death. You know, I mm -hmm. can't do this version, but that was that you know what you want to drink, so you must drink, you, you must decide yes. what you want to drink. And making a, a great tea punch um, is very much about um, having the sugar um, putting the lime in and muddling the lime. So you, you mash it down so that you're trying to release the oils that come from the skin of the lime so that you get that aroma in there and then you can put the rum on the top and you can have a couple of ices and then you, you're ready. So you're making me want to drink right now and it's too early. It's not five o'clock yet. <laughs> it's never too early. <laughs> it's never too early. And that's true. That's true. Uh, so, I love that. that. That's a, that's a great way to to, to drink um, uh, to drink a tea punch, but I think that the thing that that really interested me was actually how rum was very much intertwined with customs and ritual and all the things that we that we see um, the older people doing, which are very much about reinforcing who we are. And also our connection with spirit, our connection with with over uh, the generations, our our past is the same as our future, and you know the present. And I think that that's one of the things that really um, really drove me uh, to want to do this because it gives me a way to talk about bigger things, which is about who we are, and about the value that we have in recognizing our knowledge and our culture and our customs. 
Ah, uh, you've you've hit the, the 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 next topic I really wanted to get into so smoothly. The importance of that value, that culture, and how the rum accentuates that. Because I remember doing um an Instagram live for Successory Soccer. Shout out to the whole team at Successory Soccer where we spoke about the significance of rum during mass and why we drink the rum and how it elevates us and brings us into a spirit. Because when people people don't understand why they feel the way they feel when they're playing mass and they're drinking rum and why they have to have rum and not it's not vodka it's not champagne they want so when you're really trying to get into the cultural depth of something why you why especially in Grenada why they drink the rum like that why the Vinci's why the Trinis drink the punch and, and it's so beautiful to have someone else and 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 an elder explain that hey it is about connecting with the ancestors reverence and showing that this is our generational cultural pastime and it's beautiful and that there's different ways to 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 do it give us a typical cocktail that you could use the the chromanti rum to make and really accentuate the beauty of the rum because it sounds it sounds almost like a mysterious rum but it can surprise you and sting you at the same time depending on how you take it so give us a, a few cocktails that you have created or, or created with it to you know bring through the um the flavor of it well one of the things that we that we have done is um uh tamarind in particular pairs really well with orange so um, if you wanted to make uh, an orange um syrup and have that as a touch in the rum that's a great way to do it I always advise if you're going to uh, mix uh, a longer cocktail, then use tonic water rather than lemonade because of it bringing in the sugar, and that obviously mm -hmm. creates a very different uh, different experience. But but I'm particularly interested, and I love really simple cocktails. So the Cremante rum, if you can make an orange syrup. And it has to be uh, as much of the orange with the oils as possible, and ice, and the the tonic water to make it a really nice, longer, refreshing drink. And you will get the real um, uh, enhancements that you get from the tamarind. Uh, so those are the sorts of things that I like, um, that and I think uh, particularly go well. Now there's loads of um, there's loads of we have a few um, cocktails on cocktails. our Instagram yeah. actually because I have a friend that does um, like she creates her own cocktails. So we've had a lot of people do cocktails with our rum. So if you guys want to look at our Instagram, then you can see a couple more cocktails. examples. And uh, <laughs> the link is in the description below. Yeah. So okay. please, please, please take this moment to check out the Instagram page, Cromanti Rum, and check out their Twitter page as well and see the different recipes that they have. Majel, can you please show us what the bottle looks like? So when customers purchase the Cromanti Rum for the first time, how does it look? Like this. Yes. Give us a good full 360 of it. Beautiful regal bottle. <laughs> what does it say on the back there? Just give us like a few sentences from the back. What does it say there? So the name Cremanti originates from a historical slave fort on the coast of what is now Ghana. In Grenada, the Cremanti people lived off the land and understood how to maintain their health and treat disease with the use of medicinal infusions. This knowledge has been passed down through generations via charismatic storytelling, folklore and family secrets. And our brand honours this tradition and represents the Cremanti legacy with the creation of a unique range of spiritual runs. There we go. So when you drink that, you know you're drinking something that means something. It's not your it's not your little soda pop on the side there. It's very very <laughs> integral and especially especially important. Majel, for you, what does rum mean for you as a young person, as a woman? When you drink rum, what what do you what do you feel? How do you how do you describe it to your to your peers? When you say when your colleagues probably ask you at work, what are you doing Friday? Do you want to go for drinks? And you say, I'm gonna have some rum, cromanti rum. How how do you get that message across to them? Yeah, so before all of this, I didn't really drink rum, to be honest. I didn't really understand it. But once you learn how to drink it and find a way that you enjoy it, for example, in a cocktail or maybe even just over rice, once you know what flavours you're looking for as well, I found that really helps. In it's not just, yeah, you feel the heat, but you know what you're tasting at the same time and you know what mm -hmm. after look for so with my friends they usually drink um white rums um which isn't really something you have over ice and enjoy 
but with um, spiced rums, you can enjoy all these different flavors. So when I, I have given a couple of bottles to my friends actually, and they've all enjoyed them. They usually have it with a Coke or something, but they've been able to try it over rice as well. Um, so I'd say just be open-minded when you try yeah. um, dark rum or, or spiced rum or whatever. Um, because there's so many different ways you can drink it. Drink it and enjoy it. Brilliant. So definitely folks, you heard it here the different ways and flavors, the tea punch, straight on the ice. You can get an orange peel, I believe, and just break, yeah. squeeze it, and then drop it in there. Have it on the side, have it on the toothpick. You can put the lemon in there, mix it in. You can have the Coke. Let's talk about expansion and branding, because I see you're both wearing two different types of branding. So, you're, so your dad is in the, in, in the shirt, that's his comment, and you're in, I believe, a jumper. Talk about the importance of branding and how you've, I'm with the logo on the side, definitely. Talk about the importance of branding and how you've been able to, you know, help to establish the name Cromanti using clothing and, 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 and social media. Well, I think one of the things that um, it is clear is that there is a lot of depth in this brand. And that that's that's on purpose it, it because it tells a story and not just the product, but who we are, where we're inspired from. Yeah, is all about the story and so one of the, the, logo. the, the logo you'll see is actually um, a sugarcane knife now in the 17th and 18th mm. century this would have been what our, our ancestors would have been using to harvest sugarcane so it was important that the symbol was was there but also you know earlier on we was talking a bit about um, the, the brand story and the the um, Chromantic Kutcher and um, Julian Ferdon and the Grenadian Revolution that where they overthrew the British. And this was not just the, um, the, the local Grenadians, but it was also, um, there was a, a drum call and people answered the call. The slaves came from the plantations to join the, to join the revolution. And if you can imagine, if people are, cane cutters, what is the thing that they have to hand? That the, the most, the, the most, um, the most, uh, uh, um, the readily most available, readily available item is going to be the, the cane knife. What they work with during the day is also then the implement that finds lots of different uses. Um, so we wanted to make sure that there, that there was a clear repetition of the story, but also not just about that particular time, but also more importantly, about how have we taken that knowledge um, and used it over the generations? How has it kept people together? How have they reinforced themselves? And that's one of the things that is important, not just in the ingredient, the choice of ingredients, but also in the encouragement of people to share their own stories, share their own family recipes that were uh, that were passed on. That you know, your grandmother used to make you drink this this bush tea when you went to see mm. her. That old knowledge is actually really valuable. And we're trying to find ways to actually keep that. Go in and sustain it, definitely. There's so much we can say about the rums and the, and the, the, the significance of it as well. How, how do you see, or how, how has it been for you, matter of fact, in 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 the last 12 months so during the pandemic how did you navigate and sustain yourself because it's not easy not being able to go out to the different bars and venues and you know say hey i've got this product here would you like to try it would you like to have it in your in your business space so how were you able to stay afloat in these times because i i'm so so interested and keen to learn how the different entities and businesses and brands stayed afloat during the pandemic so let us know how did how did you keep Cromanti relevant over the last 12 months? Well, it was it was something that, um, in, in some senses, it was good for us to be launching during a pandemic, um, partly because we didn't have, uh, we didn't have to go to the on-trade because that really just closed down, the bars and all the, the, those things that we had been making plans for and our original business plan was based on uh, the on-trade um, offering but then that completely changed and we reformulated it to say, we're now in virtual spaces, mm -hmm. how do we launch? 
So the first step was actually about having uh, the right website, our own website that we could control the message and how people would would buy it and what they would experience as part of that uh, uh, part of that step in the journey. Um, so so that's that's where we are now. Yeah, obviously, a big part of that was also the social media. Obviously, um, last year mm -hmm. is I kind of I made sure we were posting very regularly. Um, doing giveaways and having that informational aspect on our page and through that we actually got a lot of followers organically so we didn't really mm -hmm. kind of go out and have and tell people come and follow us come and follow us it just happened very naturally after the tweet but also just in general a lot of people are just rum enthusiasts they want to get into rum they want to support black businesses so much of our reach is organic anyway so yeah it, it did it has been going really well on the digital aspect of it but now we are looking at the next stages which is going uh, b2b so we're now looking at uh distributors retailers online marketplaces mm -hmm. because we want to, we're really ambitious we want to not just sell more product but tell more people about the about important a story mm -hmm. um so that, that's what's driving us. And now we need to have a way to get to the market. And we're, we're really keen to look at partnerships. We're looking at um, agents, particularly in breaking into other overseas markets. We have customers in different parts of the world at the moment. But obviously, uh, you were saying that you know, once you started having a look at um, any, a, any business in this space, it's highly regulated and highly taxed, but highly regulated. So it's something you have to do with a really clear uh, vision and plan uh, in, in order to actually survive and navigate through that whole area. Truly, truly. So would you say the whole COVID and the pandemic slowed down business in terms of the logistics? Because are you making everything here in the UK or are some parts coming from somewhere else and then being brought over and being bottled and labeled here? How, how do you maintain that? And in terms of the demand, because you're saying you had an upscale in demand in the last quarter of the year. So how are you navigating that appropriately? Well, when we first started selling the bottles, my dad was in his office packaging them himself. <laughs> so brilliant, brilliant. That's how it started off, but now yeah. we have someone that does it for us. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're able, to, you know, we were able to outsource the the the, the production, but we we have to absolutely keep uh, total control over our um, over the production, the the recipe development, and all the aspects of the of the business. We are keeping total total control of. Now we started with. Um, uh, with uh, production in the UK, but that's not the the end product for us. Certainly, we are looking at um, moving production out of the UK. Ideally, I would love to be uh, producing in Grenada, or you know your 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 additional idea of, of producing in Ghana. If there are any producers yes. or distributors over there, I'd love to talk to you. So please get in touch with us. Um, because we we want to be able to as clearly as possible articulate our story, Notorious. because that's what people will buy. Uh, they yes. will buy. They will buy the fact that this is an important and authentic story. And that's why I always say that our brand it has longevity yeah. because it's all nice having yes. a nice rum and a nice bottle, but having that brand story, a really strong brand brand story, it's something that people can relate to, something that has all these different parts that can come off it, the aspect of modernizing an old tradition, um, making it intergenerational, all of this stuff is so important to making our brand different to other rum brands. And you'd be surprised about how many brands are, rum brands particularly, that aren't actually black owned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the majority are not. Yep. It's crazy, That's and they all go around that slave rhetoric again, mm. and it's just it's or not the carnival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. And and I think both of those both of those narratives are really important, but also it has to be a balance. Between yeah, them. it does have to be a balance, and I think also um, people have individual stories. Now, if people can see themselves and their family in this business, in this product, then that's actually something that 
So, uh, you know, I feel is we are democratizing rum. Rum started off for us, our experience of it was it was a local drink. It was something that we were allowed to have. We did something special with it. And then it was it was much more commercialized. So I'm I'm really keen on more people being involved in a way that they can see themselves in it. They can tell their stories. They can replicate their family recipes in this product as a way to uh, honor their own family traditions. That's a keepsake as well. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. By, by looking at that bottle, I wouldn't want to open it. I can't wait to get <laughs> a lot my, of you my hands on it. It, 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 as I said, it really like, and this is what I'm so so happy about when I'm looking at the black owned rums. And funnily enough, most of them are, are coming from the UK, so I feel like again we're 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 trailblazing in that particular aspect of the industry. And I like you said, um, democratizing it. I also want to add, we are decolonizing that rum industry and saying, hey, we're coming back now into this space, man and woman to, to come and say, hey, this is our culture. We need to represent it in the best way possible and through the genuine authentic stories that matter to people that look like us that are still in these places and these spaces. And rightfully so, we had um, some live comments here as well. Shouts out to Bluebird Pictures who said, it's the smoothest rum we've ever tasted. So there's a live testament there. So folks, if you're watching for the first time, please click the link in the description below right now. Go and order a bottle. And who knows, you might get a lovely jumper. You might get a um, coaster as well. I believe you guys have coasters. So you basically have like a, a cocktail kit and yeah. get yourself ready. Um, yeah. The summer is coming. June the 21st is coming. Get, get your orders in, folks. As well as Father's Day coming. Every man loves a good a good glass of rum. Or oh, for, your, for your family, friends, you know, Please, please be sure to support this brand and, and remember to follow them on IG. Let's continue now on the journey now. So we've spoken about 2020 and how you've cultivated and diversified yourself to ensure that you can survive in the digital marketplace. What are the plans now going forward for 2021? How What, what can we expect? Anything exclusive you can tell us here now on Doing It 365 that we're going to see from the brand in 2021? Well, yeah. And, and one of the things is that we're going to expand our offering. So one of the comments that we got from people was around uh, people wanted to have more options in terms of size. So this mm -hmm. is a prototype. See the um, we've been working on a... Lovely. I like um, that. I like that. And also we are uh, in, in the process of developing some gift packs. Um, so some special presentation boxes for special occasions. We've been doing quite a bit of work with our chosen charity, the Majonzi Fund, which is um, recognizing the contribution and the loss that our community has disproportionately suffered as a result of COVID. So every bottle that you that we sell makes a contribution to the Majonzi Fund. So it's you know it's a, you know we are an all, we are a company that has a social purpose as well as being a business. Uh, and we want to make sure that we are consistently putting back into our into our communities and recognizing the importance that rum plays. You said right at the beginning about how rum can be something that when people get together and they are uh, mourning the nine night ceremony that you're familiar with and our uh, our wakes and when we get together to to recognize those people that have passed on, rum always shows up. It's always it's always a part of that. And I say that as somebody who grew up in a family where we didn't drink rum, but it was always in the house. And it was mm -hmm. a really important, um, a really important companion from cradle to grave, as I say. In every part of our lives, rum would show up. It would be that constant friend that had a social meaning and it's it certainly a way that we got people together. So we have big, we have big plans. You know, one of the things that uh, you know, I'm keeping under my hat is thinking into the future around a chromantic academy and a way to capture and hold this information, to curate it, because yes. there's really important knowledge that my worry was that it was going to be lost. And so I wanted to do something about it. So rum is the way that I can do something that contributes. Definitely. Definitely, I, that is. I'm looking forward to seeing that unfold and develop. And rightly so, you have the the the, the necessary 
foundation already. You're working with family. Your daughter is amazing. She's beautiful. She's controlling the social media. So that's going to ensure that it, the message gets out there consistently. It's very evident on Twitter. It's very evident on Instagram. You have uh, Martin J as well, who supports you on, on back and on radio as well. So that's really good. You have the social construct as well by the Jonesy Fund, which is brilliant. And I'm, I love to hear that the black owned UK brands are giving back straight away. That is a part of their story because again, something like that always provides the longevity, like you mentioned, that is needed in this time. And it just shows that this is not a party drink. It's not just, oh yeah, carnival, let's go. Ooh, trust me, it's integral to carnival too, but it's so much more. And it's so nice to hear the tamarind, the smoothest, because again, when you think of tamarind, you think of this fruit that you only get once in a while. It's so seasonal. It's hard to get. And I feel like that also adds to the to the excitement of Cromanti because it's like, this is a rare gem. I'm not going to see it any and anywhere like that. It's going to be in specific marketplaces and specific websites. And again, folks, please take this moment, click the link in the description below and go and purchase yourself a bottle and be ready to purchase the box set when it comes out, which is going to be coming out very, very soon. Let's give our black owned businesses the full support they need. We can support all the other rums and we have done and it's the right time now that we, you know, own this space and come through and dominate. We have Everybody can start a rum right now and we still wouldn't be able to level up to the current people that are dominating the space. So let's go. So if, if you're like me and you want to start your own rum, please go and do it. Let's go. And I'm a rum lover. I'd be willing to try everybody's rum. So please, I don't mind having a whole, you know, rum shelf. <laughs> Some people have a bar. I want to have a rum shelf in my house. And I'm like, yo, these are the exotic rums. And I, I would love an exclusive Cromanti bottle where I'm not opening it. Until I get to like 100, I'm like, yeah, that one is for when I'm 100. <sighs> this is rum at 100, and it's been probably sitting here for 50 years now. And we're just enjoying it like that. Um, Sarah Jocelyn is just letting us know it's delicious, well worth purchasing. Congratulations, Kashane. Um, so again, we are loving the live feedback and showing us that people are really giving us the interest and the buzz and the live and um, brilliantness of it all. 2021, it's sounding good. It's looking good. We have the small bottle size coming through as well. Tell us what has been the most exciting or heartfelt moment for you since doing this, this run business where you said, you know what? This is why I do this. This, this is really touched me. Something that has really made you say, you know what? This is special. <laughs> I think it was um, when I realized that um, that people understood our mission, mm. that, that, mm. that they, it was resounding with people, that they were saying, yeah, I get it. I get what this is and what you're trying to do. And I think um, I did some, uh, I, I did a little section with the Ubeli uh, Foundation, um, and it was part of the, uh, the loop of the Majonzi Fund and how uh, we were recognizing, um, we were recognizing the, the loss Definitely. and the, the disruption to our grieving as a result of COVID. And that was one of the yes. things, I think that moment was, I recognized that we were doing something that was It's bigger than us. It's bigger than us. And it had the potential to actually support the in our community. Because this year has been tough, you know, Michelle loves her uh, grandmother, I love her, um, my mother. And one of the things that we did was actually in helping, um, helping to use rum as a way to facilitate people getting together and memorialising and remembering those people who've been lost. And that moment of, that's where I, that's where I wanted to happen, but when it happened, it was incredibly humbling and powerful because people got that this was much bigger than a, simply a bottle. Exactly, definitely. Man, this has been an, a, a fantastic conversation, truly, truly heartfelt. People, please, please, please take the moment right now, go and purchase your bottle of Chromantium. Can we see it one more time before we wrap up? Let's have a, let's, let's have a look at the bottle, the bottle one more time before we wrap up. There we go, Cromanti rum, ready for you. 
the cane cutter as the logo, the Cromanti, the Ghana and, and Kariku connection. We have the merchants. Can people also purchase the, the um, jumpers and the shirts or is that exclusive for now? Yeah, the um, the uh, the hoodie that Majel's wearing is on the website. Yeah. This I'm keeping for myself. Myself, <laughs> that's fine. Brilliant, lovely. Majel and Kashin, it's been so, 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 so amazing speaking to you both. Thank you very much for your time. I can't wait to taste this rum and give a little review myself on Flax365's Instagram page. Once again, folks, please go and follow the Cromanti Rum page. The link is in the description box below. And also, don't be shy. Go and purchase a bottle right now. I believe they have next day delivery or, or very, very quick delivery. The website to their, the link to their website is in the description box below. This has been Doing It 365. I've been your host, Influential. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care Thank now. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you.